so we, in New York City, we had Jeanette Sadakan as our commissioner here, who was one of those people, you know, who, who was yeah. driven to get things done, willing to take risks, did a huge number of things, and occasionally there was, you know, huge backlash against her. Mm -hmm. the, the next mayor came in, and I think the mandate was, like, don't, don't make waves. And so it's a very different political in, environment. I met with her before I even took the job, and, and we talked a lot about, and, and I also talk about this in the book, we talked about the importance of piloting, uh, of being able to make mistakes. Um, and coming from a startup background where you're constantly you know, iterating and trying things and screwing up and learning and then refocusing, that came really naturally to me. So that was great advice from her. And you're absolutely right. I mean, having a boss that has your back, particularly you know, not just when you ultimately succeed, but when you screw up and fail is huge. If you get rid of somebody every time they make a mistake, you're not going to have any employees. You know? And in a political environment, there's such a risk aversion to stepping out. And so props to Bloomberg, props to Adrian Fenty, Rahm Emanuel, and all the mayors out there who encourage people actually to iterate and try things. And it's the responsible thing to do in terms of tax dollars. And, and there's another example in the book about revamping the parking system in DC, where like typically what you do is you go out and do a multi-million dollar, multi-year RFP, right? And everybody submits their bids, and then you sort of hope for the best. You, you implement a giant system. You spend all this money. And what Jeanette did in New York, what I tried to do is we would try things. So I tested eight different parking systems in Washington. We got the public to give us feedback on what worked. And only then did we make a decision about the configuration of parking. So after we implemented the pay-by-phone parking system as part of, of, of the whole implementation in Washington, DC, um, the uptake's been incredible. And we now have over 60% of the transactions in DC for parking are by pay-by-phone. Um, and that means more turnover. Um, we also were able to raise the rates because um, people are much more willing to accept higher rates if something works better. Here we are on Canal Street, which is you know, obviously a big through street in New York. Yeah. Traffic choked all the time, really inhospitable. And you were just making a really interesting comment about, because we just saw some cyclists trying to cycle yeah. on Canal. Uh, the, you, you said that DC is way more bike friendly than New York, and, and why is that? Well, I, you know, I feel from my point of view that in the last 10 years, DC has traffic calmed itself so much. Um, between the sort of evolution of cycling in the city, more people walking, more density, um, and uh, more of a balance, I think, between uh, cars and active transportation. It's just resulted in people driving slower, being more respectful. People drive slow here due to congestion, but when they can, they hit the gas and they'll do 50 miles an hour. We have so many speed cameras in DC. We have stop sign cameras now. Um, you just don't do that anymore. And so it, it's a combination, it's not one thing, but a combination of efforts has made it friendly for cyclists on streets with no bike lane. Why don't you tell us what DC did with automated enforcement? Because I think in terms of implementable technologies mm -hmm. that can make a difference right now, yeah. automated enforcement is it. And so what yeah. did DC do? It is immediate. So it was before I got there, and it, uh, it emanated from the police department, actually. Around the year 2000, 2001, they started testing automated speed enforcement in the city. Um, uh, they also started testing red light cameras. And they quickly realized that it, it was slowing people down. What was very interesting was that you know, in a lot of places, you have people fighting back and saying, oh, I don't want a speed camera. Well, people actually were writing us and saying, no, no, we do want speed cameras. We want it on our street. Um, how come you put one on that street and not on this I street? I desperately want one on my yeah. street. I mean, I would, I would pay for it myself if I, I mean, it would make my kids safer, you know? Yeah, so it was this kind of thing where, where the government had the vision to do it. Uh, it was not the public. But then the public got on board, and now there's been a proliferation, and it's just accepted as part of the landscape. So it's expanded dramatically, and they even have stop sign uh, cameras now. It's the knowing that they're out there, it's the psychology of knowing that there could be one on, on every street corner that changes the way people drive citywide. 